starts right now. And we begin with late breaking news. We have details on a fire happening right now on San Antonio's east side. We have a live report coming up. Plus, a police body cam video of George Floyd's arrest is shown to jurors in the Chauvin murder trial. Outside with live cam, cooler this morning. How much colder will we get before sunrise? Mike Osterhage is standing by with more. And good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is April 1st. And happy birthday to our very own Stephanie Serna. Thank you. Yay. Thank you. Ha happy April Fool's Day. <laughs> But that's no joke. It no, is your no, birthday. Yeah, it is my birthday. It's yes. also photographer Asian Bermea's day, and he's a part of our morning show family, too. Happy birthday, Asian. Yes, happy birthday. Uh, are we expecting nice weather, Mike, for, yes, for our are. big day? Yes, yeah, don't let her down, man. <laughs> on you for your birthday. Uh, yeah, we are starting off kind of coolish, although some clouds overnight acted like a, a blanket, so we didn't get quite as cold as what is expected. Now, I think we will still drop down a few more degrees in the next uh, couple of hours. Good view looking off there. This is the airport. You can see the control tower right there, and looking off to the uh, west into the northwest 55 in town mid 40s hill country uh, a little bit in the way of fewer clouds out there but again we've had a fairly decent bit of clouds so that's acting like a blanket that hasn't prevented the wind though Boy, my windows are rattling overnight wind out of the northeast about 10 15 20 miles per hour and we do have some gusts especially down to the uh, south into the southeast victoria gusting to 32 right now 25 in Catula, 16 in pleasanton it'll be windier this morning and so breeze but not as windy later on this afternoon oh still on the high side mold mulberry everything else is just uh, on the light side so breezy this morning hang on to your hat and then uh, i think we'll drop down a few more degrees right around 50 with still a fair amount of clouds around here. They'll kind of break up a little bit of sunshine here and there and then a lot more sunshine later on today. Really nice day below normal, but I don't think any complaints 70 for high temperature and still comfortable humidity. What's in store for Easter weekend? Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King, what's going on at 432 in the morning? Oh, good morning, Mike. I have a couple of uh, incidents uh, this morning, including uh, this one just popping up. This is on the frontage roads of Loop 410 uh, near Ingram, actually uh, Wigwam, uh, we're told. So we'll go over to uh, the wall here, give you a closer look uh, at this area again, not on 410 itself. It is on the uh, frontage road there. So if you commute takes you over there uh, near the mall some, uh, this morning, uh, that's something to look out for there again on the frontage roads. Also have uh, this crash reported here northbound uh, 281 at 1604 at the uh, interchange there. So a little bit of a slowdown uh, coming northbound to uh, 1604 right there at the interchange uh, north of 1604 and 281 uh, this morning. A fairly normal traffic time seven to uh, eight minutes. Some construction, of course, to watch out for in that area as well. Looking across uh, the rest of the area, things relatively quiet. Also still have this uh, reported construction uh, on the west side, Loop 410 at uh, State Highway 151 uh, till the top of the hour. We'll have another update coming up, guys. Now to that late breaking news, San Antonio firefighters on the scene of a house fire on the city's east side. This is happening in the 300 block of Lamar Street. Our Stephen Cabasas is live there this morning. Stephen, what do we know right now? Mark, Stephanie, we just got a little bit of information moments before we came up here for this newscast, but we first want to start off by showing you what we're looking at this morning. This is right here on Lamar Street. You can see that that is a home where crews have been in and out of uh, since we arrived here on the scene. And what we know right now is that one woman was inside when she heard a popping noise and was also alerted by neighbors. Uh, thankfully, she was able to make it out of her home safely and no injuries were reported to either her or any of the fire crews that are on the scene right now. Uh, although the cause is still under investigation, we're told that this may be stemming from an electrical issue. And what we've spotted, if you can take a look up here, our photographer Asian showing you a power line that looks like it's going down towards the house. Again, the cause is still under investigation this morning. However, they do believe that this is possibly stemming from an electrical issue. Again, fire crews are on the scene here of Lamar Street. And what we're told right now is that the woman does have somewhere to stay in the meantime, so Red Cross will not be assisting. However, the damage right now is standing at $30,000. Of course, we'll still be out here working to get you those details. Mark Stephanie. 434, the former police officer charged with killing George Floyd has been heard publicly for the first time. His statement was part of a series of graphic videos shown in court. But first, a warning. Some of the images you're about to see are disturbing. ABC's Mona Kassar-Abdi has more.
This morning, day four of the Derek Chauvin trial with more witnesses set to take the stand after a day full of dramatic and emotional testimony Wednesday, including from Charles McMillan, a neighbor who saw George Floyd struggling and urged him to comply with the officers. I was telling Mr. Floyd, Ms. Blood, just comply with them, get on in the car because you can't win. McMillan was heard on the police body camera video played in court. You can't win. I'm, I'm not trying to win. I'm not trying to win. George Floyd then pleaded with the officers. I'm claustrophobic. I'm claustrophobic, man. Working with me. The officers then pulled him from the car. They pulled Floyd to the ground, Chauvin with his knee on Floyd's neck. Back in court, Charles McMillan breaking down. <laughs> Oh my also on that body camera video, the first publicly heard defense of Officer Chauvin's actions in his own words. We got to force, kind of control this guy because he's a sizable guy. Yeah, and I thought, and I thought he like didn't he, get in the car. Looks like he's coming on something. Jurors also saw video of George Floyd before the tragedy unfolded inside the convenience store. Chris Martin says Floyd paid for the cigarettes with a counterfeit $20 bill, so he told his manager, who then called the police. If I would have just not taken the bill, this could have been avoided. Mona Kosar Abdi, ABC News, New York. And here's where we stand with the coronavirus cases here at home. 122 new cases were reported along with two new deaths. There continues to be a decrease in our hospitals. 190 COVID-19 patients are being treated. 68 are in the intensive care unit and 29 are on ventilators. 436 on your Thursday morning. And still ahead, we'll have the latest on a deadly shooting in California. And the Spurs come up with a win against in the rematch with Sacramento Kings last night. We have highlights just ahead. And taking a look outside with live cam, it's actually 55 degrees right now. Uh, not too bad, but you might want to grab a light sweater for now. We're going to check in with Mike later on. Four people are dead, one person hurt after a shooting at an office complex in Orange, California last night. That's in the L.A. area. Police found the victims after responding to a call of shots fired. Officers confronted the active shooter. Right now, it's unclear if the suspect suffered a self-inflicted wound or was shot by police. The suspected shooter was placed in custody and transported to a hospital in unknown condition. Police say the victims include one child. The U.S. could set a new record for migrants at the southern border this fiscal year. A government projection shows Border Patrol could encounter more than 2 million people there before September 30th. This video was shot in Donna, Texas on Tuesday and shows a glimpse of the traffic at the border. Most of the migrants are single adults and some of them could be repeat crossers. The projection is subject to change, especially if the Biden administration modifies policies. The last time the number of the migrants at the border came even close to this year was back in 2006. The prices for toilet paper and diapers could soon be going up. Kimberly Clark manufactures Scott toilet paper, Huggies, pull-ups, and several other household staples. The company says prices on some products in the U.S. and Canada will go up in June. It says baby care, adult care, and Scott toilet paper will be affected. Retailers can either absorb the higher prices or pass them on to consumers by raising prices, which is what analysts expect to happen. Well, it is April 1st, but no f joking here. Having lost five of the last six games, the Spurs entered last night's game against the Kings with something to prove, and they did that. So DeMar DeRozan scored 26 points to help the Spurs snap the Kings' five-game win streak. Uh, so DeMar DeRozan scored 26 points, as we said. San Antonio had a much quicker pace and greater energy defensively in this rematch. Spurs held the Kings to 53 points in the first half. Sacramento also held to a 42% shooting overall and 31% on third three-pointers. Spurs had nine steals and forced 12 turnovers. The win improves the Silver and Black to two and four in its nine-game homestand. Derek White added 18. Rudy Gay had 16. Yaka Pirtle finished with 12 points and 14 rebounds for San Antonio. Up next, the Spurs host the Hawks tonight. Tip-off set for 7.30 at the AT&T Center. Well, here's a look at the men's NCAA basketball tournament Final Four schedule. It's number two Houston versus number one Baylor Saturday at four. Then number 11 UCLA takes on number one Gonzaga Saturday 
at 730 and the final for the women's final four here in San Antonio is set. Stanford will face South Carolina Friday at 5 p.m. at the Alamo Dome and Arizona will go up against UConn in the late game at 830 p.m. This is the court they will play on. Look for another preview coming up tomorrow morning right here on GMSA. Well, I'm sad the Longhorns won't be competing there. I know. That was a tough loss. Yeah, it was. <laughs> right now it's 442. We are at 55 degrees. And yogurt is a favorite snack for many people because it's full of nutrients, but sometimes it has too much sugar. Coming up next, we're going to tell you how to make it from scratch without sacrificing flavor. And next is opening day in Major League Baseball. How the league is making sure everything is safe for fans. And welcome back. It's 445. It's opening day in Major League Baseball, and the league is doing everything they can to make the fans feel safe. ABC's Will Reeve has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, take us back to the ball game. Ball is hit high and well, the right field. It is gone. Opening day in Major League Baseball is here. All 30 teams in action Thursday at ballparks across the country. Makes the catch. The Colorado Rockies opening up at 42.6% capacity. The Texas Rangers opening at 100% with an option for distanced seating. While the New York Yankees and Mets are only allowing 20% with fans required to have proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test. In Boston, the Red Sox with some of the strictest guidelines allowing only 12% of capacity. To start the season, about 4,500 fans will be allowed into Fenway Park. Some seats will be cordoned off with zip ties. Everyone will be socially distanced with masks on all game. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have everything you need to know when you head back to the ballpark. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, Boston. Well, switching gears, the yogurt you buy at the store is convenient and tasty, but can have more sugar than you realize. So 12 on your side, Marilyn Moritz shows us how to make our own yogurt. Think of yogurt as healthy? Look closely at the nutrition labels. You're likely to see a lot of added sugars. One solution is make your own. You can buy freeze-dried yogurt cultures online or at health food stores, but if you have a favorite brand of plain yogurt already, just save a few tablespoons of it and use that as a starter for your homemade yogurt. Then all you need is milk and a food thermometer. You can use any type of pasteurized dairy milk you'd like, but avoid those labeled ultra pasteurized because your yogurt won't thicken up properly. So here's the gist. Heat the milk to 185 degrees and maintain that for 10 minutes. Let your milk sit until it cools to 110 degrees. Skim it and add your starter. Next, it will need to ferment up to 12 hours in your oven with light and oven off then into the fridge to thicken. There are other ways to make yogurt, the sous vide method and the instant pot. The sous vide method delivered consistently excellent yogurt every time. The instant pot should have been able to also maintain a constant temperature, but the results were disappointing, even after fermenting it for three times longer than the sous vide yogurt. If you'd rather leave it to the pros, Consumer Reports says this Faye True Blend low-fat Greek yogurt is one of the healthier options at the grocery store. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. In hmm. college, we grew our own yogurt all the time. <laughs> Just left stuff in the fridge, right, guys? Oh, that's <laughs> true. I was like, excuse me? It <laughs> okay, horrible, yeah. but wasn't that biology class? <laughs> that, yeah. that, that too. <laughs> Extra credit. In the apartment refrigerator. Mm. 448 on your Thursday morning. <laughs> Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel right now. <laughs> I would hate to smell your dorm room there, Mark. <laughs> yeah, no, we did to <laughs> no, no. Uh, well, I still have uh, this reported crash. This is uh, Loop 410. Uh, the frontage road's there at uh, Wickwam. So we'll go over to the wall here and give you a closer look uh, at this uh, area. This is uh, not too far from uh, Ingram Park Mall. You can still see the uh, police activity there. So not really impacting uh, traffic too much on 410 itself. You can see uh, pretty much uh, free flowing there. Across the rest of the area, things uh, looking uh, mostly uh, okay. Still have uh, this construction on the board till 5 o'clock here loop 410 at 151 but again uh, things seem to be uh, flowing fine uh, in this area right now seven minutes each direction between 151 and i10 guys thank you samuel beautiful you know, picture behind and it, your... and it still happens occasionally too oh, you know, the yogurt like thing that, you know, or that container of cottage cheese in the back of the fridge you're like yeah 
When did I buy mm -hmm. that? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we get attached. It's like, it's our friend at the back of the fridge. We don't want to throw it away. attached by it. When it goes <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. out of the fridge at you. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is an absolutely gorgeous shot there at, uh, at Horseshoe Bay. Beautiful sunset. And uh, today's sunset should be fantastic. We do have a few clouds hanging around here this morning. Really don't show up uh, too awfully well. But what that has done is help to keep temperatures up a little bit. It was forecasting mid-40s here in Texas. Down. We're uh, not going to be it's coming close to that. And here's some of those clouds, and it's really hard to see the darker shade. But notice how this kind of gets a little, little grayish as uh, loops on through there. That's some of those low clouds that were hanging in here. It is windy though. Boy, winds out of the uh, north to northeast about 10, 15, 20 miles per hour, and then we do have some gusts on top of that. 23 Stinson, 17 Pleasanton. It was gusting at times uh, close to 30 miles per hour or more than that around Victoria this morning. The wind will kind of ease up a little bit this afternoon, so it's just going to be breezier this morning. So humidity this morning, dew points are very, very low. We had one of the ingredients. You want clear skies, dry air, and no wind to really cool down. So we've had the wind stirring things up as well as that cloud cover. Uh, the humidity, though, is going to remain low throughout the rest of the day, so it is going to be comfortable. Also tomorrow, same situation. It's going to be a fairly low humidity. It's going to start to to try to come back in here, but it's not like we're going to see any big surge in the humidity over the weekend. It will creep up, um, you know, getting to where you kind of feel it. And I did not put any pauses in there. I apologize for that, but there are a, a couple of chances. Now, this computer model tends to kind of broad brush things, but uh, there is a very, very small chance for you know, maybe a sprinkle or two late Saturday night and early on Sunday. It's just it's worth a mention. That's about the extent of it, I think. But uh, just don't be surprised if there's a couple little uh, sprinkly raindrops around there early Sunday morning. 62 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies and again windier this morning and then winds are going to be uh, kind of easing a little bit this afternoon. 70 for a high temperature. Really, really pleasant out there this afternoon. Nice day, low humidity. Uh, we are going to be on the below normal side, but don't think there's any complaints there. A few more clouds hanging around here tomorrow and then a lot of clouds on Saturday. Maybe a little sprinkly shower late and that would extend perhaps into the uh, early morning hours of Sunday. A bit of sunshine on Sunday, 72 for high temperature. So overall, nice looking weekend kind of on the uh, compared to normal or the average a little bit to below that. Then he's going to get turned up next week. Ah, get ready for that. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's the payoff. I like the reaction to that. Ah, uh, yes. All Just right. being truthful. Yes. I agree with you. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 452 is still ahead. Why a particular SpongeBob episode will no longer air or be available for streaming. Your pick three numbers this morning. One, two, four, Fireball three. For those of you still asleep, daily four, nine, four, six, seven, Fireball one. Cash 5, 7, 23, 25, 33, 35, and Lotto, Texas, 1, 13, 20, 25, 32, 49. Your Powerball numbers, 3, 10, 44, 55, 68, Powerball 24, Power Play 2. Good luck. Some reality show stars are facing federal charges, plus how the pandemic is affecting SpongeBob SquarePants. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Daria Albinger. Hello, it's Chrissy Teigen. Chrissy Teigen will grace the front of People Magazine's The Beautiful Issue. The story focuses on her changing definition of beauty, facing racism and her miscarriage. The 35-year-old mother and cookbook author shares the cover with her children. Teigen is married to singer John Legend, who was People's Sexiest Man Alive in 2019. The Beautiful Issue hits newsstands on Friday. Two members of the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City reality TV show are facing federal fraud on charges. Jennifer Shaw and her partner Stuart Smith were arrested in Utah on charges including conspiracy and money laundering. Prosecutors alleged the two cheated hundreds of people nationwide over a 10-year period in a telemarketing scheme. The coronavirus pandemic has even affected the sea creatures in Bikini Bottom. After careful review, Nickelodeon executives decided that the quarantined crab episode of SpongeBob SquarePants is a little too similar to real-life events and will no longer air or be available for streaming. The episode from the show's 12th season features a lockdown after an outbreak of the clam flu. Celebrating birthdays this April Fool's Day are political commentator Rachel Maddow and British actor David Oyelowo. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. Daria Albinger, ABC News.
Well, now we know what they've been chatting about in the boardroom at Nickelodeon. Yeah, I didn't know that would be an issue. Yeah, no kidding. Mm. Well, <laughs> anyway, 457. Happy Thursday. Glad you're with us. And still ahead as more Americans are getting the COVID-19 vaccine, many states are easing restrictions despite warnings from health officials. Apple will no longer give Siri a female sounding voice by default. We'll tell you about Siri's new voice options coming up in Tech Bytes. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. There's progress on the vaccine front on the ongoing fight against COVID-19. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, why now isn't the time to relax. And outside with live cam, it's a crystal clear morning out there. Beautiful shot of downtown as we head into final four weekend. Uh, not quite as cold this morning. We'll talk to Mike in a moment. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, April 1st. Thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, it's pretty pretty mild. I, I did grab a jacket, though, when I was going to my car because I forgot my makeup in the car. Mm -hmm. And then I came back in and then I was like, eh, I don't need it. Yeah, oh, it's, yeah. it's yeah. really not that bad out there. But Mike has no pressure. He must deliver a fantastic forecast for Stephanie Cerna's birthday today. Aww. It is going to be beautiful today. Thanks, well, Mike. Go, Just Steph. like the receivers. So. Aww, yeah. Thank um, you. yeah, grab a jacket though. I mean, it's still we're still in the 50s, so if you, you know, kids have to wait at a bus stop or something like that, you especially need one if you're just like bopping over to the car. Probably not. 55 degrees and uh, it is milder than what we had forecast for this morning. And that's because these clouds decided to hang on in here. There are a couple of spots where there are some clear skies that has allowed temperatures to drop down. We have very, very dry air out there as well. Nice day today will be slightly below the average normal high temperature up to 70 low humidity. I don't think any complaints there and these clouds are going to go away. The wind is going to be easing up because it's been very, very windy overnight and like I said, just a really nice afternoon. It's probably going to be the prettiest day of the, <clears throat> excuse me, the next five, six, seven days going into the first part of next week. The aquifer dropped down eight tenths of a foot yesterday and the allergens, a lot of oak is still showing up. We're right in the heart of the season there and low amounts of everything else. I don't know about you, but my windows were shaking overnight with some of these uh, wind gusts out there. Winds out of the northeast. Now it has settled a bit. But especially down to the south and southeast, still 15, 20 miles per hour. And then we have some of those wind gusts around there. 24 still in Beeville, 20 in Catula. Windier this morning, and then it is going to be uh, easing up somewhat. And again, these clouds kind of hang in here just a little bit. Then we'll see a lot more sunshine today. 70 for a high temperature. Uh, tomorrow, chilly start. Pleasant in the afternoon. About the same. We'll drop down into the 40s uh, tomorrow morning and then get right back up there to 70 and still comfortable humidity. More clouds over the weekend. Uh, comparing it to the normal temperatures, we say we will be slightly on the cool side. But overall, I mean, nothing too extreme as far as temperatures. Humidity is still going to be okay. It has been in the past very humid on Easter Sunday, but uh, not going to be bad. Maybe a little bit of a sprinkle here or there. I wouldn't really, uh, wouldn't really count on that too much. But get ready because next week, heat's coming in here. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. Anything big going on we should know about, sir? Nothing uh, too big at the moment, Mike. Things are relatively quiet uh, at the moment. Let's look at 35 at Evans on uh, Trans Guide and uh, 281 and Hildebrand also looking fine. We had a crash there. We'll crash on 281 and 1604 earlier, but that has uh, cleared. So looking at the maps, uh, things looking uh, pretty much uh, okay across uh, the region. We did have some uh, residual construction here on uh, I-10 westbound at Foster Road, but uh, that is s starting to improve as well. So if you're coming in from Seguin, 30 minutes into downtown San Antonio, 26 minutes from New Braunfels, 25 minutes on I-10 from Bernie. And here's a look at Transcott again, 410 at Perrin Vital, 281 at Winding Way. Again, a crash there a little north of there has cleared. And well, we still have uh, this situation. This is on the uh, frontage roads there at uh, 410 and uh, Wigwam near Ingram Park Mall, but that sh is not really impacting Loop 410 itself. We'll have another update coming up. Speaking of updates, we have an update, update to late breaking news. Flames have forced a woman out of her east side home this morning. And this all happened in the 300 block of Lamar Street, just east of I-37. Our Stephen Cavazos is live on the scene this morning with what we are learning from investigators. Mark Stephanie, investigators believe that this may be stemming from an electrical issue and the scene is slowly clearing out this morning. But what we spotted, we want to show you a CPS uh, energy crew member is actually out here working on a power line. 
Now, it's not clear if this was a direct cause of that fire. Again, that is still yet to be determined, but investigators do believe this may be an electrical issue. But that woman inside was reportedly had heard a popping noise and was alerted by her neighbors. And thankfully, she was able to make it out of her home safely. But that fire was said to be on the exterior of her home. Uh, the cause, again, still not determined this morning. And thankfully, no injuries were reported. But the estimated damage right now sits at around $30,000. Now, thankfully, that woman does have a relative that she is staying with this morning, so Red Cross will not be assisting. But you can see that we still have investigators that are out here, just a few fire crew members. And of course, that person from CPS is working on that electrical pole right there that is just adjacent to the home. Again, we want to point out that it's still not clear if the two are connected, but investigators do believe that the cause was electrical this morning. We'll have more coming up uh, later this morning on GMSA, so stay with us. Mark Stephanie, over to you. This morning, major developments from Pfizer. The company's now saying its human trials show its vaccine is 100% effective at preventing COVID-19 in children as young as 12. ABC's Ike Jachi is in Washington with the latest. This morning, the CDC's director is out with a new milestone. Over 100 million Americans have received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. A remarkable feat in such a short period of time. And now, after more than 2,000 human trials on kids ages 12 to 15, Pfizer reporting its vaccine is 100% effective at preventing COVID for children in that age group, a development made possible by willing participants like 12-year-old Caleb Chung. Potentially helping other kids to feel safe and want to get the vaccine in the future when it becomes publicly available um, was really some way that I could actually help out. This is like really a high level of efficacy. No side effects that we're seeing so far. So we've got to have the FDA do the full evaluation, but I think this is terrific. As the sprint to vaccinate Americans continue, coronavirus cases and hospitalizations appear to be catching up. This morning, the CDC director warning Americans of a possible fourth wave. The warning is also not stopping Americans from traveling. TSA screenings at airports continue to rise. Delta Airlines now saying they'll start selling those middle seats on May 1st after a year-long ban. Meanwhile, the New York Times is reporting that workers at a Baltimore factory accidentally mixed up ingredients for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, potentially ruining 15 million doses. But the company says none of those vaccines actually made it into circulation. Ike Jaji, ABC News, Washington. Here at home, Catholic Charity says volunteers are needed in helping the unaccompanied children housed at Freeman Coliseum's Expo Hall. They'd prefer people who are bilingual, but it's not required. This is Health and Human Services says 75 of the children have tested positive for COVID-19. They've been able to quarantine the children in a separate section. Meanwhile, there's still hundreds of boys who are in the main section of the Expo Hall. And with the possibility of more buses arriving as early as today, more male volunteers are needed. We're very grateful to our community in San Antonio for stepping up and always serving with us. The volunteers would work four hour shifts between 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. daily and would need to go through a background check. If you'd like to help, we have a link to more information on KSAT.com. The Gordon Hartman Foundation is helping get the COVID-19 vaccine out to the community. The distribution will take place today, but it requires registration. Priority will be given to children 16 and older with special needs and will take place at Morgan's Wonderland. If you are interested, you will need to first email the address there on your screen. That's info at gordonhartman.com. You'll get an email either confirming the appointment or an email that appointments have been filled out. We have all that information on our website at ksat.com. The Archdiocese of San Antonio announcing new less restrictive protocols ahead of Easter Mass. Churches can now open all pews. Social distancing requirements will now be reduced from six feet to three. Mask wearing still in place though, and there will be thorough cleaning at churches. There will also be a change to the Passion Play. For more than 30 years, the reenactment has taken place on Good Friday in downtown San Antonio with parishioners of San Fernando Cathedral. But this year, the production was pre-produced to avoid crowding. It will air Friday at noon on Catholic Television of San Antonio and on their Facebook page. Time check. We're nine minutes past the hour. And still ahead, details on Microsoft's new contract with the U.S. Army to produce futuristic headsets using HoloLens augmented reality technology outside with live cam yeah not quite as cold as we were expecting this morning but that's okay we're going to find out what the rest of our thursday holds as we kick off the month of april you're watching gmsa 
512, welcome back and good morning if you're just now waking up. More traffic authority coverage now. President Biden unveiled his $2 trillion infrastructure plan, wanting to fix roads and improve transit across our country. Our Samuel King joins us now from the traffic lab. And Samuel, the proposal includes funding for traffic safety too. Indeed, it includes $20 billion to boost existing safety programs and fund new Vision Zero plans aimed at reducing crashes and fatalities from those crashes, especially for cyclists and pedestrians. Now, this overall plan includes $621 billion in transportation spending, including $115 million to modernize roads and bridges, another $85 million billion, excuse me, with a B, for public transit. Amtrak also would see a boost. It could increase service in Texas, including between Dallas and San Antonio and Houston and San Antonio. President Biden says the plan will help the country win the future. It's big, yes. It's bold, yes. And we can get it done. The to pay for this plan, Biden is proposing an increase in the corporate tax rate, basically reversing the tax cut from a few years ago. That's drawn the opposition of groups like the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. They support other ways to pay for the plan, like tolls. Republicans like Texas Senator Ted Cruz also voicing some strong opposition. You'll hear from him next hour. Congress must approve the plan, so it is not a done deal just yet. And coming up, as I mentioned, more local reaction, including from VIA Metropolitan Transit. Mark, Stephanie? Thank you, Samuel. Time now is 514. Still ahead on GMSA, closer look at Microsoft's newest high-tech gadget made for the United States Army. Plus, Siri will have a new voice on your iPhone soon. Details next. With moderate to severe Crohn's disease, I was there. Just not always where I needed to be. Is she all right? I hope so. So I talked to my doctor about Humira. I learned Humira is for people who still have symptoms of Crohn's disease after trying other medications. The majority of people on Humira saw significant symptom relief in as little as four weeks, and many achieved remission that can last. Humira can lower your ability to fight infections. Serious and sometimes fatal infections, including tuberculosis and cancers, including lymphoma, have happened, as have blood, liver, and nervous system problems, serious allergic reactions, and new or worsening heart failure. Tell your doctor if you've been to areas where certain fungal infections are common, and if you had TB, hepatitis B, are prone to infections, or have flu-like symptoms or sores. Don't start Humira if you have an infection. Be there for you and them. Ask your gastroenterologist about Humira. With Humira, remission is possible. Microsoft has won a $22 billion contract with the U.S. Army to produce high-tech goggles for our soldiers. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Microsoft teams up with the U.S. military. The Pentagon has awarded a $22 billion contract for 120,000 pairs of Microsoft's augmented reality goggles. They enhance what soldiers can see at night and through smoke. Real-time maps can also be accessed on the lenses. Fiat has teamed up with Google on a new line of its Series 500 cars. The Hey Google Fiats offer voice control for most functions. They also allow users to check settings like tire pressure, fuel levels, and whether doors are locked remotely with smartphones. And Apple is adding two new voices to Siri. They apparently have more natural inflections. The new selections are available to English-speaking users worldwide. Also, a female voice will no longer be Siri's default. Users will choose who speaks to them during setup. I wonder if I can audition. In 500 feet, turn left. Those are your tech fights. Have a great day. I'm used to Siri's voice. Yeah, I am too. It'll be weird not hearing it. Uh, you can switch it now. You can switch it to Aussie or... British or all sorts of, of different ones. It's, it's weird. Uh, even South African, I think. That's interesting. I, yeah. I still want Yoda. You, you <laughs> want would, Yoda? Fun. Yeah, that would be fun. That would be fun. <laughs> you get what you want for your birthday stuff. Oh. Right now, let's check uh, Samuel King's in the traffic lab at 519 on the dot. What's happening? Well, we still have uh, the situation here. This is the frontage roads of Loop 410 close to uh, Ingram Park uh, Mall. But you can see uh, we have a look, appeared to a tow truck has arrived here in the scene as we go uh, over to uh, the wall. So this will probably get cleared up uh, shortly. And you can see 410 here in uh, the foreground uh, not really impacting things too much. So that.
that's a good thing there. Across mo most of the area, things uh, looking fine uh, this morning. Maybe some construction here or there, but otherwise no other incidents or crashes at the moment. That, of course, can always change. Uh, looking at Bandera Road this morning, 10 minutes in each direction from uh, Loop 410 uh, to 1604. Uh, so that's a fairly good time this morning. If you're someone who needs to head out early, this is a good time to do it, guys. Good advice. Thank Steph, you, Samuel. Imagine if somehow your phone got stuck and it was his voice. It, <laughs> it'd be time for a phone upgrade. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, I'm late for work. <laughs> right, yeah. Constantly, all the time. <laughs> all, right. all right, beautiful view out there. Gray from Wilson County. That sunset. Oh, fantastic. A couple of those high clouds out there. It's going to be another beautiful sunset later on today. Some folks will see a, a decent sunrise. We do have a lot of clouds here in town. As of right now, they may start to break up just a, a little bit. The humidity is quite low. Step outside, you don't even feel the humidity at all. And that's after that front move through because at this time yesterday, we were talking about this when we were looking at the, this graphic, the 24 hour dew point change, and how we were saying that uh, it was going to be so dramatic. Yeah, compared to this time yesterday, the dew point, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere, has dropped down anywhere from 30, 35, 40 degrees compared to what it was yesterday. It was very, very sultry. Remember the, the live cam pictures look kind of hazy all morning long. And then, of course, that front came and cleared things out. And the humidity is going to remain low all the way through tomorrow, as well as Saturday. And it's not bad sunny. It's going to start to creep up there. You're going to kind of notice it a little bit more. But still, it's going to be on the comfortable side. Then with this graphic, we'll get back up into the 60s next week, and that's when the heat comes back in here. Hot and humid, it's looking like uh, going on into next week. But the next couple of days are very pleasant. Some clouds around this morning. We'll have uh, more sunshine later on today, and then clouds are gonna come back in tomorrow morning. We'll keep a lot of them throughout the day. Same thing on Saturday. This computer model tends to kind of just broad brush things in here, but there may be a couple of just little sprinkly showers here and there, and that could linger on into early Sunday morning. Just one or two of those little uh, sprinkly showers here or there. Not a big deal. Just something to keep in the, the back of your mind. And then, like I said, after that, it looks like uh, temperatures are really going to start to uh, go up as we go into next week. Now, around the country today, the only thing really noticeable out there to the uh, northeast of us, but look at that in behind. Just nothing but clear skies out there. So this is basically what's in store for the, uh, the next couple of days, which is very nice. We will have a lot of clouds hanging around here, but really pleasant temperatures as well. Actually slightly below the early April average. 62 today at noon, partly cloudy skies. A couple of these leftover clouds this morning, and it's not going to be anywhere near as breezy. Actually, the winds are starting to settle just a little bit, especially in the northern about two thirds of our viewing area after being very breezy overnight. 70 for a high temperature later on today. Plenty of sunshine tomorrow. I'm going to start off 45 degrees, so we should be a little bit chillier this morning. Again, the cloud cover th this morning kept us milder than expected and then up to uh, 70. So a nice looking uh, good Friday. A shower is going to be possible late and I'm talking like light sprinkles. If that maybe even into early, early Easter Sunday morning and then 72 for high temperature. A lot of clouds Saturday, a little bit of sunshine on Sunday. And then we are going to be flirting with 90 by the middle of next week. Ooh, ouch. Mm. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Yeah, kind of what we usually expect in April, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any big plans today for your birthday that you are aware of? Uh, we shall find out. Okay. <laughs> ah, all right. So it <laughs> remains to be seen. Remains to be I know, seen. I know the Spurs won for you last night. Oh, thank you, Spurs. Which, which yes. is a very that's big a, deal. That's a big deal. <laughs> you text Luis and just go, oh, come on, she needs this. <laughs> That. Exactly. Little hint, little hint there. 523 on your Thursday morning. And still ahead in your morning spotlight, Daniel Craig will return at the, oh yeah, a Knives Out sequel, plus your first look at Spirit Untamed. Actually, sequels. Oh, sequels. Oh, yes. Wow, sequels. that's interesting. Pick three numbers, a one, two, four, Fireball three, daily four, nine, four, six, seven, Fireball one. Cash five, we have seven, 23, 25, 33, 35. Lotto, Texas, 1, 13, 20, 25, 32, 49. And your Powerball numbers, 3, 10, 44, 55, 68, Powerball 24, Power Play 2. Good luck. Plenty of movie news today, including a potential film franchise worth big bucks. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Very nice. Oh, Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. 
got to do this more often. And they will. Netflix reportedly has bought the rights to two Knives Out sequels, reteaming writer-director Ryan Johnson and star Daniel Craig. Variety puts the purchase price at $450 million. The 2019 tongue-firmly-in-cheek whodunit grossed more than $300 million on a $40 million budget. So I was drawn to the role. Jeremy Strong is set to play Jonas Salk. The Emmy-winning actor has signed to star in Splendid Solution, about Dr. Salk's search for a polio vaccine. Strong will also be an executive producer on the film. He said, let's get out of this town. Just take it slow. Horses can feel what you feel. It's in your heart to run free. It's in mine, too. I'm going to call you Spirit. Here's your first look at Spirit Untamed, about a girl on the frontier who befriends a wild Mustang that's just as independent as she is. The adventure from DreamWorks Animation rides into theaters June 4th. Saddling up in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And time now is 527. Still ahead, a status update on all three U.S. COVID vaccines and how officials are working to distribute them more effectively. And you've heard of cauliflower potatoes, even cauliflower pizza. But what about peeps? We're going to tell you about those things coming up. Hi, good morning. Happy Thursday. It's April 1st. Happy birthday, Stephanie Cerna. Thank you, Mark. We, there's a brand new 2022 Ferrari in the <gasps> back parking lot. What color did you want? Yes, pink. Let's Aww. go back. Oh, okay. well, never mind. <laughs> Let's go to Mike standing by. Mike, the theme this morning has been we were expecting cold and it's still cool, but yeah. not as cold as we thought it might. Correct, be. because we had a uh, little cloud cover. Some of these stubborn clouds that decided to hang on in here. And so that acted like a little bit of a, a blanket this morning. But still, if you're, you know, kids heading out the bus stop, grab a light jacket, 55 degrees, coolish enough. Uh, we do have some fairly dry air out there, so it's not that damp chill. And wind is out of the uh, north to northeast at seven miles per hour. It was a lot breezy earlier this morning. I don't know about you. I heard the windows uh, rattling from all that, that wind, but that has finally settled down somewhat. The, like I said, the dew points are very low. It's really, really comfortable out there. And the nice thing is it's going to stay this way throughout the rest of today. And wind is out of the northeast and yeah, and a, you know, an OK breeze out there. We do have a couple of gusts, especially further on down to the south. Oak is on the high side and has been on the high side the past couple of days, low amounts of everything else. And we have not really hit the peak of the oak season yet. That's going to be right about the middle of April. High enough. It seems like it was delayed a little bit this year. I don't know if that was because of the, the cold snap that we had or not, but uh, yeah, it's it's high and uh, according to history, it's going to be getting higher as we go into the next couple of weeks. 62 today at noon, 70 for a high temperature. It is going to be just a wonderful day out there. Nice little breeze, low humidity and plenty of sunshine. Just what we need for the birthday girl over there. Details on the weekend forecast for Easter Sunday coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, the man, the myth, the legend, Samuel King. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mike. Things looking uh, pretty good there on uh, the roadways here this morning. 281 at Hildebrand. Uh, we'll get to the next uh, camera there in a second. I-10 at 35 also looking fine as well. Some quick uh, uh, travel times as we head over here to uh, the map. Things uh, looking uh, fine, so travel times uh, fairly normal, including about a half an hour coming in to uh, downtown from uh, Seguin on I-10. And taking a look at I-10 once you get inside 1604, uh, five minutes each way, so can't get much better than that in between uh, 1604 and 410 on the east side. And one more time looking at uh, Bandera Road, nine minutes heading northbound, 10 minutes heading southbound this morning. And we'll have another update coming up. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man is dead after he lost control of his motorcycle and crashed into a house. Happened just before 3 a.m. on the northeast side in the 10,000 block of Northampton. Police say the man was riding with another friend on a trike when he lost control on a curve, hit a few mailboxes and a tree before crashing into the home. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Officers believe speed was a factor in the crash. Firefighters now making sure the home is secure and structurally stable. San Antonio police say a 61 year old man is dead after he was hit by an SUV late last night. It happened just after 10 p.m. in the 6700 block of FM 78 near Riddiman on the northeast side. Police say the driver of the SUV tried to swerve to avoid hitting the man, but didn't have time to stop. The man was pronounced dead at the scene. Right now, the driver of the SUV is not facing any charges. 
This morning, the manufacturers of all three COVID-19 vaccines being used here in the United States are still being tested and they're still working to increase production capabilities. CNN's Brett Conway has a roundup of the latest news about each vaccine. The vaccine rollout continues. Between Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson, nearly 38% of U.S. adults have had at least one dose of a vaccine. And the manufacturers of each vaccine continue to ramp up their efforts. Let's start with Pfizer. The company says its COVID-19 vaccine proved 100% effective in a small clinical trial of 12 to 15-year-olds. The Food and Drug Administration will still need to allow that age group to get the shot but the bottom line is that by the fall, I think there's a good possibility we'll be vaccinating teenagers uh, to a 12 and up. Pfizer is also working on a ready to use vaccine to Moderna now, which is testing its vaccine on teens and kids, too. We were excited at the opportunity to be a part of it. And the company just started a clinical trial for a vaccine designed to protect against the variant first identified in South Africa. And to Johnson & Johnson, the drug maker says some ingredients accidentally got mixed up at a Baltimore plant, ruining as many as 15 million potential doses. But the White House is stressing it will not affect President Joe Biden's ultimate goal of making vaccines available to all Americans by May. OK, here we go. As more people get vaccinated, there's going to be a greater umbrella of protection over society. So when vaccination becomes available, get vaccinated. I'm Britt Conway reporting. A Texas state trooper shot in the line of duty last weekend has died. The Department of Public Safety announced the passing of trooper Chad Walker on Wednesday. It says on Friday, Walker approached a car parked alongside a highway near Mejia. DPS says the driver got out of the car and fired at Walker several times. Walker was taken to a hospital, but by Monday, officials said he had no viable brain activity. He was kept on life support in order to be an organ donor. The 38-year-old trooper is survived by his wife and four children. In other headlines, space flight company Virgin Galactic has unveiled a sleek, mirror-coated spacecraft design that it calls Spaceship 3. Now, the space tourism firm, which is the brainchild of billionaire Richard Branson, hopes to send its first customers to space next year. The company says the flight tests of the new vehicle are expected to begin this summer. The new space plane looks a lot like a Spaceship 2, which Virgin Galactic has been testing for more than a decade. It's also designed to be durable enough to help the company achieve its goal of flying 400 chips to suborbital space each year. A friendly reminder, if you haven't registered to vote in the May City and School election, your time is running out. Today is the deadline to make sure your address and other information is up to date. You cannot register to vote online, but we do have all the information you need to know on KSAT.com. You can also check your registration status. And time now is 537 and about 55 degrees right now. Still ahead on the morning show, details on an important pet food recall because of possible salmonella contamination. And we're going to tell you about country music star Blake Shelton's new line of hard lemonades. Outside with live cam, first day of the month of April. Looking back towards downtown San Antonio, we'll find out the forecast for Mike coming up. Check back on traffic with Samuel King. And welcome back. It's 540. In your morning consumer headlines, some pet foods are being recalled because of possible salmonella contamination. Midwestern Pet Foods Incorporated is voluntarily recalling specific expiration dates of 10 of its dog and cat food brands. That includes K9X, Earthborn, Holistic, Sports Trail, Sports Mix, and Meridian. The company says a routine sampling program revealed the finished product may contain the bacteria. Retailers have been told to pull the pet food from their shelves. The Food and Drug Administration says no human or pet illnesses have been reported so far. Delta Airlines is ending one of its pandemic era practices. The airline says every seat on its flights will be on sale starting May 1st. During the height of the pandemic, many U.S. airlines blocked middle seats on flights as a safety precaution. Most of those have already done away with uh, their policies limiting capacity. The announcement means Delta will let the policy expire April 30th as scheduled.
And your favorite country song may be about whiskey or beer, but that doesn't mean that's what you have to drink. Blake Shelton is getting into the booze game and he's doing that with a line of hard lemonades. The singer partnered with Smith Works Vodka to create the drinks, which are marketed as hard seltzer lemonade. Available flavors include classic lemon, ripe strawberry, southern peach tea, and crisp lime. Right now it's 541 on your Thursday morning. And coming up next, how a former admiral in the U.S. Navy is using history to provide a cautionary tale for the future. 544, if you didn't catch it yesterday, we were at KSAT, held a live stream town hall about pregnancy and infertility during the pandemic. Our Courtney Friedman hosted the discussion with four different experts who busted myths and offered a lot of information and recommendations. Yeah, guys, this was an incredible discussion that lasted about an hour, and it was based solely on the questions that you, the viewers, have been asking us for a couple weeks now. Those questions cover topics like the vaccine, whether it's okay to get it if you're pregnant, breastfeeding, or getting infertility treatments, whether it transfers immunity to a baby, which recent studies shows it does. We discussed labor and delivery protocols that women are allowed to have one visitor with them in most hospitals, even if that woman herself has tested positive for COVID-19. We talked about breastfeeding, infertility, and most importantly, mental health through all of these difficult decisions and changing scenarios. Let us take some of that burden and stress off of you. Let us help you kind of, if you're struggling with anxiety and depression and concerns about starting your family during all this uncertainty, um, we're here to help. If you missed the town hall, don't worry, you can still watch it in its entirety. It's on our website, ksat.com. Guys, back to you. A former admiral in the U.S. Navy uses history to provide a cautionary tale about the future. In his new book, Admiral James Stavridis looks at how similar rising tensions with the U.S. and China are to the tensions between the U.S. and the former Soviet Union. The Admiral told Case that he wrote the book because he was interested in how the two superpowers of the 20th century avoided a third world war as a result of the Cold War. He says America's connections and alliances helped prevent a global crisis because everyone was able to look out for one another. However, he also notices a deteriorating relationship relationships between the U.S. and its allies, and he says we need to commit to a global discourse through organizations like the United Nations or NATO. Be part of that international world. Um, support those international organizations. They're flawed. They're difficult. They're frustrating. I was part of NATO. Believe me, they're frustrating bureaucracies. But at the end of the day, I'd rather have allies than not, especially as I watch the trajectory of a rising China. And Admiral Stavridis is one of the featured authors this year at the San Antonio Book Festival. You can read more about his book, 2034, a novel of the next world war, or learn more about Book Fest right now on KSET.com. Good morning, everybody. Right now on KSAT.com, we are talking about a collaboration featuring Peeps and Pepsi right in time for Easter, the I'm, Easter holiday. I'm not okay with this. I mean, I'm not a big fan of Peeps anyway, and every year they come out with different flavors, but this is a whole nother level where Pepsi is flavored as Peeps. Yes. And that's yeah. so, it's so a, a It's a Peeps flavored cola and uh, they have just released this. So they're putting these in these little, you can see right there, 7.5 ounce cans. And uh, you can either go online and register to win some of these. Maybe you could buy some of these on the uh, on the secondary <laughs> market. I don't know. I don't know who's interested in this, <laughs> but apparently cute, they're though. pretty popular. I mean, they're cute and really bright, but I don't know. It just sounds super sweet. I feel like you'll get a cavity as soon as you you try one, but if you want to find out more information on these, if you're interested in these, just in time for Easter, you can find all that on KSAT.com. Oh, speaking of peeps, you've heard of cauliflower pizza and tots and now cauliflower peeps. Green Giant and peeps have teamed up to send out a special release to release the introduce and introduce the cauliflower flavored peeps. The brand said in a statement this morning, the cauliflower flavor is subtle and derived from green giant riced veggies cauliflower. Hmm. East package contains two peeps, marshmallow bunnies. Of course, it's all part of a not very tasty April Fool's joke. No, ooh. <laughs> no, Even thank green you. giants like. 
<laughs> on the packaging. <laughs> no, don't try this one. <laughs> nice try, Green Giant. Let's check traffic at 548. Samuel, good morning. I don't know which, uh, you know, the Pepsi peeps or the fake cauliflower peeps. Well, I'll take know, the sugar yeah. and the soda. <laughs> the cauliflower. I'll take a look at some uh, travel times uh, coming in from the south and west. Uh, 28 minutes on 37 coming into Pleasanton from Pleasanton, 90 minutes coming in, uh, 19 minutes, I always do that, 19 minutes on US 90 coming in from Castroville and 16 minutes coming in on 35 from Lytle. Let's take a look at the uh, maps here, uh, mostly looking okay, but we do have one issue here uh, on uh, the west side. Uh, this is approaching, uh, this is uh, Loop 410 approaching State Highway 51, traffic down to 15 uh, miles per hour. Apparently there might be a stalled vehicle or something there uh, on that ramp, so that is causing a a bit of a slowdown uh, this morning. Uh, looking at the uh, travel time though, getting to uh, 151, you're down up to eight minutes. Your travel time uh, speed is down to 59 miles per hour, uh, 71 miles per hour going the other way. So uh, going uh, heading north and east on 410 looks fine uh, this morning. Here's a look at a trans guide 35 at Evans traffic building, but still flowing pretty well as it is on 281 at Hildebrand guys. Thank you, Sammy. I saw a meme yesterday you guys might appreciate today of all days. It says April Fool's Day is canceled this year because no made up prank could match the unbelievable stuff going on in the world right now. <laughs> I saw the exact same thing. It's like, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it is. You know, back to the cauliflower peeps, though, mm -hmm. that's not really a bad idea to get kids to eat cauliflower. I mean, if you if you kind of oh, if you it, make it ah, look in the shape like of a little bunny or something mm -hmm. like that. But I think this well, it was marketed as cauliflower flower flavor. Well, I know, but, so, but yeah, but I agree with yes. you. Yeah, if you dress up your vegetables and make them fun, maybe kinda, it'll kinda work. Like, you know, uh, mincing up cauliflower and adding it into rice. Yeah, you know, or even just that rice. So. That's how I'm tricking myself into eating vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you're gonna say your daughter. No, myself. <laughs> there's Stephanie. Mm, this is good, Stephanie. What is this? Oh, it's just <laughs> <laughs> Fooled her. Uh, hey, another fantastic uh, sunset over there at Woodlong Lake, and you can see the lighthouse right there in the middle. Great shot. Thank you very much, Mr. McClung, for that. And uh, this morning, it uh, we've got a couple of clouds out there. Some areas are going to be seeing a, a decent sunrise, but uh, the cloud cover that we had sticking around here is what has kind of helped hold temperatures up. It acted like a bit of a blanket. We had forecast about mid 40s here in town, but we've been holding right now just uh, only as low as the mid 50s here in town, but it is cooler out in the hill country. Here's some moisture aloft in the atmosphere, so we will have maybe a cloud or two this afternoon. Maybe that milky shade to the sky, not the just vivid blue skies like we did have, but still it's going to be a good looking day. And it's going to feel very nice. Yesterday we did make it up to 76 degrees because after the front moved through, yes, it was windy, but that cool air never really settled in here as much as expected. So we didn't cool down as much in the morning and therefore we uh, you know, had that milder start and got up into the mid 70s. And uh, today, though, we're forecasting right around 70 for high temperature throughout much of the area and again, low humidity. So it's going to be really comfortable out there. Again, I referred to a couple of days ago. I think there were only one or two freezing readings on the map and now seven in International Falls, 24 as far south as Omaha. So a really, really cold batch of air has settled on in here. And that's why our temperatures are cool. And it's going to be another cool morning tomorrow. We're going to be dropping down into the 40s and then still kind of on the coolish side, if you will, even going into the weekend. Good looking weekend, not the prettiest, but uh, temperature wise, humidity wise, it's going to be okay. 62 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, low humidity today, and a really, really nice day. Mostly sunny skies. Again, probably that uh, milky shade of the sky, high wispy clouds out there, but nice day. 70 high temperature. Tomorrow, we start off in the uh, mid upper 40s around the area, get up to 70 once again. More clouds hanging around here tomorrow. A lot of clouds Saturday, perhaps a couple of. Uh, Light little sprinkly showers, and I'm not talking anything big, but that'd be late Saturday, perhaps still left over into early Easter Sunday morning. 52 starting off on uh, Easter, 72 for high temperature, and humidity is going to be okay. Okay. Then it's going to come back in next week, and mm. we're looking at upper 80s and a lot of 90s around here going into next week. Got Are you, you okay with that forecast, birthday girl? Oh, yes. Thank because you. Because if not, I was going to write a very strongly worded email to Mike. Oh, about I see. It. No, yeah. we're okay. Okay, good. Especially right. this weekend. Thank you. Yeah, he looks so concerned. Right now, 553 on your Thursday morning. And coming up next, we're going to tell you about a couple of special pets that need a good home over at the San Antonio Humane Society. But first, your pick three numbers, one, two, four, fireball three. 
Your daily four numbers, 9467 Fireball 1. Cash 5, we have 7, 23, 25, 33, 35. And Lotto, Texas, 1, 13, 20, 25, 32, 49. Your Powerball numbers, 3, 10, 44, 55, 68, Powerball 24, Power Play 2. Good luck. As we wrap up this half hour GMSA, I want to tell you about some pets who need homes over at the San Antonio Humane Society. Say hello to beautiful Melina. She's a retriever lab mix with a gorgeous chocolate brown coat, floppy ears, and three legs. She's looking for a home where she can have all the attention. She loves her runs and walks. Gail is another tripod favorite at the San Antonio Humane Society. This sweet girl faced major life changes when she had to have her leg amputated before arriving at Humane Society. She would do best with experienced adopters who can help her adjust to her new surroundings. Maine Society has an adoption special going on right now. For more information on these pets and more, please visit sahumane.org. It's about three till six right now. President Biden has laid out his plans for reforming infrastructure around our country. Still ahead on GMSA today, we'll tell you what that means for roadway construction and improvements here in the Alamo City. And taking a look at your early morning commute, we have some flashing lights uh, right now at 410 and 151. My hunch is this is leftover construction. We will confirm with our traffic expert Samuel King coming up at the top of the hour. A San Antonio man was hit and killed while trying to cross a street this morning. Details on what police say happened. There's progress on the vaccine front on the ongoing fight against COVID-19. I'm Micah Jachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, why now isn't the time to relax. And taking a look outside with live cam, we are actually at 54 degrees right now. Uh, pretty mild and it's gonna turn out to be a beautiful day. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday. It's April 1st and no fooling. Today is Stephanie Cerna today. Uh, day today. It is her birthday. <laughs> thank hey. you. Happy thank birthday, you. Steph. Thank you. We all remember when we were 37. <laughs> You're so nice. <laughs> Plus 10. That's okay. Oh, also, happy birthday to photojournalist Azian. His birthday today as well. One of our morning mm -hmm. photographers. Yes. yes. All right. We're going to jump right into the forecast. And Mike is here with uh, more on what's been an interesting night. We were expecting a big cool down, but that didn't really happen, did it? E correct. Uh, we had some cloud cover kind of hanging on mm -hmm. in here. Kept temperatures up a little bit. But I was just thinking back because 24 hours ago at this time, we were uh, waiting on that front because it was warm. It was humid out there and at least we got that drier air in place. But uh, it is going to be another gorgeous day today. We are going to have a lot of sunshine, maybe a couple of high clouds out there. And uh, 54 right now, 39 now in Kerrville. So maybe not as much in the way of some cloud cover out in portions of the Hill Country. 41 in Comfort, 50 in New Braunfels. And the temperature, the 54, is very close to what uh, is the normal, the average, what you'd expect this time of year. Oak is really up there. We are definitely getting into the, uh, the throes of the oak pollen season. I think we'll cool down a couple of more notches in the next few hours, right around 50. And then we're going to have a nice uh, warm up. We gain about 20 overall throughout the course of the day and we'll have more sunshine today. 62 at noon. It has been breezy overnight uh, in some spots, still a little bit on the breezy side. Wind is going to kind of ease up a little bit, just about the you know, usual 15, 10, 15 mile per hour wind today. Low humidity and really comfortable today with a high temperature up to 70. Chilly morning tomorrow and still jacket weather, maybe even over the weekend, not as cool, but um, overall a nice weekend is in store looks wise, eh, but temperatures going to be really nice details on Easter Sunday in just a couple of minutes hitting the roads right now. Traffic Authority and Samuel King has been pretty quiet on the roads this morning. Yeah, not too many issues compared to some other days we've had uh, this week. Mike, thanks to you. Good morning. Good morning to everyone out there. Uh, Mark talked about this just before the top of the hour. There was a, an issue there at Loop 410 at uh, State Highway 151. There was some construction there overnight and it also appeared that there was a stalled vehicle there. So let's go over to the wall, get a closer look at what's going on uh, in this area. But just within the past uh, literally two minutes, so between the time Mark talked about it and right now, they were able to get that vehicle out of the way. So traffic is flowing uh, once again here on uh, State Highway 1, uh, Loop 410 at 151. Uh, traffic still slow moving uh, through there, but it looks like that lane blockage 
will be coming off the board here shortly. So that's certainly good news for uh, your commute. Things looking fine in the rest uh, of the area, about 37 between 1604 and I-10, uh, 12 minutes uh, in each direction there. And other parts of the region, 25 minutes if you're coming in from New Braunfels, 19 minutes uh, from 90 from, on, from, on, from Castroville, 24 minutes on I-10 from Bernie into downtown San Antonio. So things looking fine this morning. Again, here state 410, 151. Looks like that lane blockage is very quickly being cleared. We'll have another update coming up. New this morning, a man is dead after police say he lost control of his motorcycle and crashed into a house. Happened around 245 this morning in the 10,400 block of North Hampton. Police tell us a man was riding with a friend when he hit a few mailboxes in a tree before crashing into a home. A crash caused the motorcycle to slide under the next door neighbor's truck. The man was pronounced dead at the scene. Police believe speed may have been a factor in this accident. Police are also investigating another deadly accident. They say a man in his 60s was hit by an SUV while crossing the street. It happened just after 10 last night in the 6700 block of FM 78. Police say the driver of an SUV swerved, trying to avoid hitting the man, but another driver in another vehicle didn't have time to stop. The man was pronounced dead at the scene. The driver is not facing any charges at this time. Now taking a look at the latest coronavirus cases here in Bear County, local health officials reported 122 new cases along with two new deaths. There continues to be a decrease in our hospitals. 190 COVID-19 patients are being treated. 68 are in the intensive care unit and 29 are on ventilators. Just a reminder, those who are 80 and older are able to receive the COVID-19 vaccine without an appointment. That is happening at the Alamo Dome today and Saturday. We have the dates for the rest of the month listed on our website at kset.com. This morning, major developments from Pfizer. The company now saying its human trials show its vaccine is 100% effective at preventing COVID-19 in children as young as 12. A development that could have major implications for the upcoming school year in the fall. ABC's Aika Jachi is in Washington with the latest. This morning, the CDC's director is out with a new milestone. Over 100 million Americans have received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. A remarkable feat in such a short period of time. And now, after more than 2,000 human trials on kids ages 12 to 15, Pfizer reporting its vaccine is 100% effective at preventing okay. COVID for children in that age group, a development made possible by willing participants like 12-year-old Caleb Chung. Potentially helping other kids to feel safe and want to get the vaccine in the future when it becomes publicly available um, was really some way that I could actually help out. This is like really a high level of efficacy. No side effects that we're seeing so far. So we've got to have the FDA do the full evaluation, but I think this is terrific. As the sprint to vaccinate Americans continue, coronavirus cases and hospitalizations appear to be catching up. This morning, the CDC director warning Americans of a possible fourth wave. The infection rate is up 15% nationwide, hospitalizations climbing more than 6% in the last week, and 17 states are showing an increase in deaths. Still, states continue to ease restrictions. I know this is not easy, and so many of us are frustrated with the disruption this pandemic has had on our everyday lives. But we can do this as a nation working together. Dr. Rochelle Walensky urging Americans to continue to wear masks. This says the Wisconsin Supreme Court strikes down its mask mandate. The warning is also not stopping Americans from traveling. TSA screenings at airports continue to rise. Delta Airlines now saying they'll start selling those middle seats on May 1st after a year-long ban. Meanwhile, the New York Times is reporting that workers at a Baltimore factory accidentally mixed up ingredients for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, potentially ruining 15 million Million doses, but the company says none of those vaccines actually made it into circulation. Ike Jaji, ABC News, Washington. Right now at 607, back here at home, a local nonprofit is ready to give people their shots at hope. The Gordon Hartman Foundation will administer COVID-19 vaccines to families in our community later today. Our Stephen Cavazos is live outside of Morgan's Wonderland this morning with more. Good morning, Stephen. Will this be open to everyone? 
Hey, good morning, Mark. Well, this is not an open vaccination event. Instead, vaccines will actually be prioritized for those with special needs. And starting today, children who are 16 and older can receive their first dose of the Pfizer vaccine. Now, take a look at your screen. We should have some information that's popping up there right now. Now, this will be happening from 4 this afternoon into 7 this evening here at Morgan's Wonderland. Now, vaccines will be distributed on a first email basis. People who are interested should email info at gordonhartman.com. Now that email, you should get one. Uh, you should get a confirmation email that is that's confirming that appointment or notifying you that appointments have filled up. Now remember, you must register this for this event prior to arriving here at Morgan's Wonderland. This information is already posted on our website at ksat.com. You can head over there for more information. Reporting live this morning, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Thanks, Stephen. More traffic authority coverage now. President Joe Biden unveiled his $2 trillion infrastructure plan, wanting to fix roads and improve, tr improve rather, transit across the country. Our Samuel King joins us now from the Traffic Lab. And Samuel, we understand the plan is drawing support and opposition. As you might expect with something with a big price tag, the ambitious plan promises to reshape the na nation's infrastructure and road system, including here in Texas. But it does come again with a hefty price tag, $2 trillion. The overall overall plan includes 621 billion in transportation spending including 115 million to modernize roads, bridges and highways. It also includes 20 billion dollars to boost existing traffic safety programs and to fund new Vision Zero plans aimed at reducing crashes and fatalities especially for cyclists and pedestrians who share the roads. The plan is drawing opposition from some business groups who don't want to see the corporate tax cuts from a few years ago reversed to pay for the plan. Also, Republicans like Texas Senator Ted Cruz voicing opposition. The only thing it appears they're in favor of is more government spending, more taxes, and more government power over your lives. But other members of Congress, like Democrat Lloyd Doggett, are applauding the plan. He says it could help pay for transit investments in Austin and San Antonio. And speaking of transit, VIA says the plan would ensure equitable access to public transit in the community. Its statement reads in part, or keep SA moving plan, which voters overwhelmingly approved in November, is focused on moving more people faster, connecting them to more jobs and opportunities, and expanding transit options to fix uh, to fit diverse mobility needs. That will only be possible with additional support at the federal and local levels. So that's from VIA there. The plan still has to make it through both the U.S. House and Senate. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says she wants a bill to clear her chamber at least by July 4th. We'll see. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Samuel. Having lost five of the last six, the Spurs entered last night's game against the Kings with something to prove. And boy, they did. DeMar DeRozan scored 26 points to help the Spurs snap the Kings' five-game win streak, beating Sacramento 120 to 106. The Spurs had nine steals and forced 12 turnovers. It's still game day. Spurs host the Hawks tonight. Tip-off is set for 7:30 at the AT&T Center. So the Spurs gave Stephanie birthday gift number one okay. by winning last night. That was great. And you're Thank happy you so about much. That. Yes, I'm very happy. It was exciting to see the score this morning. It's <laughs> nice like, to report a win. Yes, it is. So again, tonight, go Spurs, go. 611, we are at 54 degrees. And Apple making some changes to the way Siri sounds. Still ahead, how you'll be able to choose between different voices. And the Pfizer vaccine showing 100% effectiveness in children as young as 12. After the break, how this will impact all communities, even the elderly. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're in the mid 50s, a little mild, not as cold as we thought, but still might want to grab a sweater on your way out. But today we are expecting beautiful temperatures. We'll be right back. 615 Pfizer announcing its clinical trial on kids 12 to 15 years old showed its vaccine is 100% effective. As Ursula Perry reports, this opens up all sorts of possibilities for kids and adults at risk by the end of the year. Good morning, I'm Ursula Perry. This opens all sorts of possibilities for not just kids, but also adults at risk of coronavirus. So I, the good news with this information is that they're going to be able to apply to the FDA to just basically add an amendment to their existing authorization. So that means that for kids 12 to 15, hopefully they'll be able to start getting vaccinated by summer 
um, late summer so that they'll be ready for the next school year. Pfizer sticking it to the coronavirus again, the first to be proven effective in children younger than 16. Getting emergency use authorization now from the FDA will impact mass vaccination sites in just a few months. And that will actually impact the elderly, too, in a good way. We know that vaccinating older people is, again, important for preventing hospitalizations and deaths. But when you look at models of pandemic flu and other illnesses, when you have a limited amount of vaccine, if you can vaccinate younger people, you can prevent more transmissions. That means older people who have not yet managed to get vaccinated will potentially have less chance of getting the virus, bringing us closer to herd immunity. And already Pfizer is testing this vaccine on even younger kids. And for the younger kids, they're hopeful to have some of that data by the end of this year so that maybe early 2022, we're looking at kids you know, less than 12 years of age getting vaccine or being available potentially. Even though this likely will mean that more people are going to be in line trying to get a vaccination by this summer, it shouldn't impact your ability to get a shot. Production planning has already taken into account the need to expand because more people will be eligible as the year goes by. So unless there's some sort of disruption in the supply chain, you should be able to get your shot. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Ursula Perry. Right now, 617. Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King. I was looking at the camera at 151. Is that wind or are there problems? There, uh, wind and a small problem there, oh, I see. Uh, Stephanie. I had to think about that for a second there. <laughs> um, just looking, uh, yes, we had, a, we had that stalled vehicle earlier uh, that we were telling you about near the uh, top of the hour. That one was cleared, but it appears that this one uh, is a separate incident there. This is actually on a uh, 410. So let's head over to uh, the wall here, give you a closer uh, look at that. So one of, uh, I believe the left lane there is blocked. Uh, there on uh, 410 approaching uh, State Highway uh, 151. So watch out for that traffic still uh, flowing well there, as you can see here uh, on our guide here, our map there. Again, Loop 410 at State Highway 151 there on the uh, west side. Looking across uh, the rest uh, of the area, things are looking uh, relatively uh, good this morning. So if you need to head out soon, uh, this would be a good time uh, to do so. Uh, real quick before we head over to uh, Mike there, I uh, want to remind you that beginning later this morning for the next two days, Broadway northbound between Nacogdoches Road and Nottingham Drive will be closed for a construction project, Mike. Thanks, sir. Yeah, there's one on uh, just up the road from the station there on St. Mary's big construction project as well. All right, as you are heading out this morning, a jacket's not a bad idea. I mean, temperatures are here in town. We're in the mid 50s right now. We'll drop down a couple of more degrees, but it's definitely uh, chilly in the parts of the hill country down in the 40s. And then nice looking day, low humidity, plenty of sunshine, some high wispy clouds out there and 70 for a high temperature and the breeze, which it's been breezier uh, up to this point this morning is going to be out of the east, maybe 10 15 miles per hour not too awfully bad just love this picture this just looks like kind of you just want to lay down a picnic blanket and just stare up at the at the sky on a picture like this thank you very much appreciate that all right uh, this picture is not too bad we do have some clouds a lot of clear skies in the hill country that's why it is cooler out in the hill country but the clouds acted like a bit of a blanket so that kept temperatures up a little warmer than what was expected as we were expecting the low 40s so we're in the uh, 50s right now 54 degrees that is the normal Temperatures is called the 30 year average low temperature for the state and average high is 77. So we will be on the cool side, not only today, but also going into the weekend. And then as we go in each and every week going through the month of April into uh, one month from today, you gain about two degrees every week as far as the average temperatures, even on the low and the high end of the scale. Um, up to 84 for normal high temperature, the average high by the 1st of May and uh, 63 for the normal low temperature. So yeah, it is continuing to warm up at a fairly even steady pace now as we go in towards summer. And by the way, this is the beginning of the meteorological spring, April, May and June. 54 here in town. Like I said, it's cooler in the hill country. 41 comfort, 37 in uh, Kerrville as of right now. And these dew points have dropped dramatically down 35, 40 degrees on average from where it was at this time yesterday when we were waiting on that front to move through, which finally came through about nine o'clock or so yesterday morning here in town. 
Dew point's going to remain low, so we're going to have some uh, dry air tomorrow. Saturday's going to be comfortable. Just a tad more humidity, not too bad on Sunday and Monday. And then humidity is going to be coming back on in here as we go in toward the middle of next week. And the heat's going to be joining it. So it's going to be pretty hot and humid next week. 62 today at noon, partly cloudy skies and a lot of high clouds, um, maybe some milky shade to the sky. Not as vivid a blue, but still a nice looking day. 70 high temperature with low humidity tomorrow. More clouds around here and we are going to make it up to 70 once again, starting off in the 40s. Saturday looks nice, but very cloudy, perhaps a sprinkly shower or two late. Saturday in one or two left over early on Easter Sunday, but still I think it's a nice looking weekend. Very pleasant, not too hot and humid, but it's going to be hot and humid next week. Well, thank you for the nice day and the nice weekend, Mike. You are most welcome. 621 on your Thursday morning in the US Army incorporating augmented reality goggles made by Microsoft. How they say this can enhance what soldiers see. At Philadelphia, we know it makes the perfect schmear of cream cheese. The recipe we invented over 145 years ago, and me, the world's best, and possibly only, chamelier. Philadelphia, schmear perfection. I feel bad for kicking your seat on purpose. I wish it had just told you it's a boy. I wish you didn't have to hear all that. I promise I will not eat any more of your friends. Really? Okay, it might happen one more time. Millions of people are saying yes to Allegra, including the experts. It's the number one allergist recommended brand for non-drowsy relief. Allegra works two times faster than Claritin, so you can get going first thing. It lasts up to six times longer than Benadryl, giving you relief through the late shift. And unlike Zyrtec, Allegra is non-drowsy for all your non-stop adventures. Join the millions saying yes to Allegra. And for kids, try Children's Allegra, the number one allergist recommended non-drowsy brand. In this morning's GMA first look, take us back to the ball game. Ball was hit high and well, the right field. It is gone. Opening day in Major League Baseball is here. All 30 teams in action Thursday at ballparks across the country. Makes the catch. The Colorado Rockies opening up at 42.6% capacity. The Texas Rangers opening at 100% with an option for distanced seating. While the New York Yankees and Mets are only allowing 20% with fans required to have proof of vaccine vaccination or a negative COVID test. In Boston, the Red Sox with some of the strictest guidelines, allowing only 12% of capacity. To start the season, about 4,500 fans will be allowed into Fenway Park. Some seats will be cordoned off with zip ties. Everyone will be socially distanced with masks on all game. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have everything you need to know when you head back to the ballpark. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, Boston. Microsoft teams up with U.S. military. The Pentagon has awarded a $22 billion contract for 120,000 pairs of Microsoft's augmented reality goggles. They enhance what our soldiers can see at night and even through smoke. Real-time mapping can also be accessed on the lenses. Fiat has teamed up with Google on a new line of its Series 500 cars. The Hey Google Fiats offer voice control for most functions. They also allow users to check settings like tire pressure, fuel levels, and whether doors are locked remotely with smartphones. Apple is adding two new voices to Siri. They apparently have more natural inflections. The new selections are available to English-speaking users worldwide. Also, a female voice will no longer be Siri's default. Users will choose who speaks to them during setup. Very interesting. Time now is 626. Texas Republicans are setting out to begin passing new voting restrictions. What that bill includes, still ahead. And the latest on the third mass shooting in less than three weeks. Details on the suspect's condition. It's a shot at hope. Good morning, I'm Stephen Cavazos. Coming up this morning on GMSA, how a local nonprofit is helping those with special needs get their first dose of the Pfizer vaccine. Outside with live cam, mid 50s here in San Antonio. We do have some clouds in place. Mike says we will see some sunshine later on. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, April 1st. More importantly, it is Stephanie Cerna's birthday Aww, today. Thank you. Thank happy you very birthday. much. Thank you. Happy Thursday. Happy April Fools. Well, we're hoping. <laughs> yeah, April Fools. Go easy today, folks. <laughs> do you That's say happy sure. April Fools? Um, I do. Well, I'm 
Because it's a great day for, for The me. jury's still out for me on that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's a happy day today. Uh, not only a birthday, but uh, it's really pleasant outside. Temperatures are nice. Not quite as chilly here in town as what we had expected because we had some cloud cover hanging around here overnight. Uh, on the hill country, though, without cloud cover, temperatures have dropped down into the low 40s, even a couple of uh, upper 30s. 54 in town. Dry air, so it's really comfortable. We've got a nice breeze coming in here out of the uh, northeast at 10 miles per hour. As a matter of fact, it was windier this morning. The wind has kind of settled down a little bit, but even for this time of the morning, having 10 close to 15 mile per hour winds, it's kind of on the stronger side and it is windier further on down to the south with uh, we've actually had some gusts earlier this morning around Victoria close to about 30 to 35 miles per hour. Oak remains on the high side. We are definitely getting into the uh, the heart of that season. Everything else is low as far as the other allergens and uh, throughout the rest of today couple more clouds hanging around much of the area out in the hill country you'll probably see a nice sunrise and uh, cool ish no or temperatures are a little bit below what you would expect the average this time of year so we're going to be up to 70 mostly sunny skies a lot of uh, maybe a milky shade to the sky today and then tomorrow chilly start down in the 40s another pleasant day a lot more clouds though tomorrow we're going to keep a lot of clouds around through the weekend and temperatures will still be nice technically on the coolish side and a sprinkle here or there late Saturday, early, early Sunday is possible. But overall, I think a nice Easter weekend. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King, and it's still kind of uh, easy going out there? For the most part, but we do have a new crash here, Mike. This is a uh, downtown uh, I-35 uh, appears to be in the southbound lanes at uh, Alamo. So let's go over here to the wall so you can get a better uh, look at this here. You can see the emergency vehicles here in the, in the lane. And there you see uh, the vehicle in front uh, there. So that's uh, something downtown to watch out for. Not really impacting things on 35 just yet, but a little bit of a slowdown there on Alamo. We'll continue to watch it. Looking across uh, the rest uh, of the region, things mostly quiet. A little bit of a slowdown here at uh, 410 at I-10. We'll take a look at that in our next update. Uh, this stalled vehicle is still here on 410, uh, very close to 151, but your travel time looking good there. Seven, six, seven minutes each way between uh, 151 and I-10. Travel time's looking good too. 16 minutes coming in on 35 from Lytle, uh, 26 minutes from New Braunfels, 24 minutes on I-10 from Bernie. And we'll have another update coming up. Thank you, Samuel. Starting today, families with special needs will be able to receive their first dose of the Pfizer vaccine. The Gordon Hartman Foundation will be administering vaccines at Morgan's Wonderland. Our Stephen Cavazos is there live this morning. Now, Stephen, what should people know prior to arriving? Hey, good morning, Stephanie. Well, they must first be registered before arriving here to Morgan's Wonderland. And another important thing to point out is that this is not an open vaccination event. Instead, this is, will be for those with special needs. And starting today, children who are 16 and older can get their first dose of the Pfizer vaccine. Now, we should have some information that's popping up on the screen right now. This will be happening from 4 this afternoon into 7 this evening. Again, here at Morgan's Wonderland. Vaccines will be distributed on a first email basis and people who are interested should email info at gordonhartman.com. Now you should get an email that confirms the appointment or notifying you that appointments have already filled up. Again, this is going to be happening here at Morgan's Wonderland between four this afternoon to seven this evening. That information is already posted on our website at ksat.com. You can always head over there for more information. Reporting live this morning, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Mark Stephanie. New this morning, a woman was forced to evacuate after her home caught fire around 4 a.m. This happened in the 300 block of Lamar, not far from Hackberry and I-37. Firefighters tell us when they arrived, they saw flames on the outside of the home. The woman was able to make it out safely. She told crews she heard a popping noise before the fire started. Right now, the exact cause is unknown, but investigators believe it may have been electrical in nature. The damage is estimated at around $30,000. Happening today, Governor Greg Abbott will hold a press conference in Westlaco on Operation Lone Star. He will be joined by the Texas Department of Public Safety Director Colonel Steve McGraw and members of the National Border Patrol Council. This is happening today at 1130 a.m. And you can find more information about this on our website at kset.com. 635 in your morning headline, the nation's third mass shooting in three weeks, this time in Southern California. Four people have died, including a child. Police say the suspect is in custody after being shot by law enforcement. ABC's Ike Ajachi has the latest. 
Breaking overnight, four people are dead and two others are wounded in the city of Orange, California. Upon arrival, the officers discovered um, shots that were actively being fired and our officers did engage in an officer involved shooting. Mo Reyes was just about to sit down for dinner with his wife when the shots broke out. Thinking quickly, Reyes hid for cover. I saw like five officers running down. I heard other gunshots, so I stood behind the wall and just started kind of recording, you know. He was live broadcasting the chaos on social media when someone who'd been shot was dragged out. Paramedics worked on them and loaded them in an ambulance. More than 10 shots were fired. Other witnesses say they heard the gunfire in bursts. The police came and then I heard a few more gunshots go off and then there was like a lot quickly. The ages and names of the victims have not been released. Police are still determining the relationship between the shooter and the victims. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Texas Republicans setting out to begin passing new voting restrictions. The bill the state Senate was debating this morning included reduced options to cast ballots, limits on polling hours and more power to partisan poll watchers comes after an elections overhaul was signed into law last week in Georgia, where opponents have already filed suits and are calling for boycotts of corporations that are silent on restrictive voting measures. A full vote on the bill could come as early as today. A reminder, if you have not registered to vote in the May City and school elections, your time is running out. Today is the deadline to make sure your address and other information is up to date. You cannot register to vote online, but we do have all the information you need to know on KSET.com. You can also check your registration status. Just click on the article placed on our homepage. Previously unreleased body cam footage from the officers charged in George Floyd's death were shown in court Wednesday, causing one witness to become so emotional the judge had to call for a short break. CNS Daryl Forges is in Minneapolis with a recap of day three of testimony and what we can expect on day four. A witness breaking down on the stand, watching footage of George Floyd's arrest. <laughs> Another feeling remorseful for simply doing his job. If I would have just not taken the bill, this could have been avoided. A third describing the moment Minneapolis police officers first encountered Floyd. One officer drew a, a handgun and opened the door and pointed the gun at whoever was in the driver's seat. It startled me. That moment caught on then officer Thomas Lane's body camera shown in court yesterday for the first time. Your hands off right now. Floyd begging officers not to shoot him. Please don't shoot me, please man. I'm not gonna please. shoot you. Also heard for the first time, Chauvin's reaction after Floyd's body was taken away in an ambulance as he's confronted by a witness who criticized Chauvin for kneeling on Floyd's neck. That's one person's opinion. But, 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 no, 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 I got to get him. I got to get him. We got to we 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 control this guy because he's a sizable guy. Witness Charles McMillan says he had a short conversation with Chauvin after because he said simply what he saw was wrong. But the dad got to look at you as a maggot. In Minneapolis. I'm Daryl Forges. If you did not catch it yesterday, we here at Case Hat held a live stream town hall about pregnancy and infertility during the pandemic. Our Courtney Friedman hosted the discussion with four different experts who busted myths and offered a lot of information and recommendations. Yeah, guys, this was an incredible discussion that lasted about an hour, and it was based solely on the questions that you, the viewers, have been asking us for a couple weeks now. Those questions cover topics like the vaccine, whether it's okay to get it if you're pregnant, breastfeeding, or getting infertility treatments, whether it transfers immunity to a baby, which recent studies shows it does. We discussed labor and delivery protocols that women are allowed to have one visitor with them in most hospitals, even if that woman herself has tested positive for COVID-19. We talked about breastfeeding, infertility, and most importantly, mental health through all of these difficult decisions and changing scenarios. Let us take some of that burden and stress off of you. Let us help you kind of, if you're struggling with anxiety and depression and concerns about starting your family during all this uncertainty, um, we're here to help. If you missed the town hall, don't worry, you can still watch it in its entirety. It's on our website, ksat.com. Guys, back to you. And time now is 640 and we're in the mid 50s right now. After the break, what inspired one admiral to write his book 2034, a novel of the next world war. The United States and former Soviet Union had many confrontations during the Cold War. 
There were proxy wars, such as the wars in Vietnam and Korea, but the two superpowers of the 20th century never entered war with one another. That reality is what inspired Admiral James Stavridis to write his book, 2034, A Novel of the Next World War. The U.S. Navy veteran and former Supreme Allied Commander of NATO told KSET that he believes Cold War literature helped prevent a full-on world war between the U.S. and Soviet Union. Books and films help people conceptualize how terrible a global war would be. However, Admiral also noticed the rising tensions with China and how some people are calling it a second Cold War. There's no substantive literature of what that war would look like, how we could stumble into it, how we could fail to control the ladder of escalation, and what the consequences would be. So I started looking to the past, but really ended up writing a cautionary tale for the future. The Admiral is one of the featured authors this year at the San Antonio Book Festival. You can read more about his book or learn more about the Book Fest right now on KSAT.com. Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King. I saw, is there a lane closure there at 35 in Alamo? Yes, uh, Stephanie, there's a crash uh, there uh, being reported, and you can still see the emergency crews on the scene. Let's get you a better look at this here at the uh, wall. Again, 35 Alamo, the upper level. Uh, we had more vehicles here there a little earlier, so hopefully this will get cleared out pretty soon. And a good thing is, at, at the moment, see, uh, things not really slowing down too much, as you can see uh, on the map here, still green in this area. If this were happening, let's say, an hour from now, you definitely see more of a backup. Uh, so hopefully that does get cleared here fairly soon. Uh, but looking at the drive times on 35, uh, heading to 410 now, 19 minutes and uh, each direction. And once you get inside of 410, 10 minutes between the northeast side and downtown, and still 10 minutes between the southwest side and downtown on 35. So things looking fairly good there. Uh, still had to slow down as uh, we promised here, Loop 410 northbound at I-10 east down to 24 miles per hour. And we do have uh, this closure again uh, starting here fairly soon over the next couple of days. Uh, the northbound lanes of Broadway between Nacogdoches and Nottingham will be closed uh, today and tomorrow. They hope to wrap that up by five tomorrow doing some construction there. The southbound lanes will remain open. And we'll have another update here before the end of the show, guys. Well, if you're just now tuning in, don't forget, it's a very special Yay. day today. Aww. Happy birthday, <laughs> Stephanie Serna. Thank you. And Steph on the left, that's her mini-me on the right. Aww. And that's her husband, Luis, who is a photojournalist here at KSAT. Aw, thank you guys so much. Happy birthday. We love you, Steph. Aw, love you guys, too. <laughs> yeah. And, ha and happy birthday to our photojournalist, Asian, who's out in the field. And mm -hmm. also our executive uh, producer, Sabrina. It's her birthday today as well. A lot the of birthdays. Tri triple oh, threat on. here at yeah. KSAT. Yes. Yeah. No fool in there, guys. No. <laughs> well, happy Thank birthday. You. Happy birthday. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Here is a beautiful, beautiful picture. Just kind of tranquil. You see those ducks just kind of floating mm. around there, sun beaming off the water. Ah, oh, it's very nice. Thank you so much for the uh, KSAT Connect picture. All right, we've got uh, some clouds hanging around here this morning. Obviously, the sun is starting to, we're seeing the glow of the early morning sunrise, and it's this cloud cover that actually kind of helped keep temperatures up somewhat because it acted like a bit of a blanket and that's why it didn't get quite as cool as what we had expected. Wind is out of the uh, northeast at uh, 10, close to 15 miles per hour in some areas, but it has definitely settled down this morning. We uh, have still a couple of wind gusts though. Port SA is gusting to 20 and there are gustier breezes a little bit further to the south, but the wind is going to kind of ease up a little bit later on uh, this afternoon. All right, the clouds. Now, this is water vapor imagery. It's not an actual uh, image of the clouds, but it's the moisture aloft in the atmosphere, and this can then kind of translate into some cloud cover, and that's why we have some of those out there right now. And uh, probably a milky shade of the sky later on to uh, later on this afternoon, but we'll have a lot more sunshine. And um, Again, maybe a, a little high level cloud here or there. And then tomorrow, clouds are definitely going to start to kind of thicken up around here. I think we have more of them around. And then especially going into Saturday. Now, Saturday evening into Sunday, this, first of all, this computer model tends to kind of, again, broad brush things. Now, this doesn't mean we're going to have all this rain around here, but just that chance for a couple little sprinkly showers. That's going to be late Saturday evening and then overnight into the early morning hours of Sunday. And again, this is not like just this swath of rain. It's just where little sprinkly showers may kind of show up, sort of downplaying it a little bit. Yeah, there could be a couple of drops here and there, but uh, otherwise, I think it's going to be a very nice Easter Sunday. Uh, sunshine may be kind of limited, though, especially on Saturday as, as well as Sunday, but temperatures are going to be held in check on top of that. So we're going to be seeing these readings that'll be 
comfortable, especially uh, tomorrow. Dew points remain very low. Same thing tomorrow. It's getting up there a little bit more Sunday into Monday, kind of where you sort of notice it. But then by the middle part of next week, we'll start to see a lot more humidity coming back into the picture as well as some very warm or call it just hot temperatures next week. 62 today at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature up to 70. I'm going to call it mostly sunny. We'll still have a few maybe high clouds out there. Tomorrow will be another chilly start. And uh, even over the weekend, I mean, you know, 50, 52, light little jacket. And like this morning, grab a jacket for the kids hanging out at the uh, the bus stop. More uh, sunshine and a few more clouds tomorrow. So kind of a mix of that, if you will. And then cloudier skies on Saturday. One or two of those sprinkles late and then early Sunday. A, a, a sprinkle or two, but I think very nice for the Easter weekend. Some Easter's have been a whole lot hotter. Some have been a whole a lot, lot colder. colder. So, yes, yeah. so this is just right, Not I think. Too bad. Thank you, Goldilocks Mike. forecast. <laughs> just right. Just right. We'll take it. About 10 till, and we are at 54 degrees. And when it comes to staying healthy, there are five popular drinks people drink every day that could lead to a heart attack. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to tell you which ones doctors say you should stay away from. All right. I didn't know we were doing this here, but I'm Yay! glad we are. We were just talking a bit about them. Also, another birthday this is GMSA photo journalist, Asian Bermea. He works his magic behind the camera, and we want to wish him a wonderful birthday as well. Happy birthday, Asian. Happy birthday, buddy. And looking out there with a live cam, we are getting some great weather for our birthday. We're about mid 50s and it's going to be beautiful 70s later on. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, that breaking news overnight, a mass shooting in California, a gunman opening fire at a business complex, killing four, including one child. This is the third high profile mass shooting in just three weeks. So we'll have the latest on the investigation and so much more right here on GMA. And in the news you need to know before you go, a man is dead after police say he lost control of his motorcycle and crashed into a house. It happened around 2.45 this morning in the 10,400 block of Northampton. Police tell us the man was riding with a friend when he hit a few mailboxes and a tree before crashing into a home. The crash caused the motorcycle to slide under the next door neighbor's truck. The man was pronounced dead at the scene. Police believe speed may have been a factor in this crash. A woman was forced to evacuate after her home caught fire around 4 this morning. This happened in the 300 block of Lamar, not far from Hackberry and I-37. Firefighters tell us when they arrived, uh, they saw flames on the outside of the house. Right now, the cause is not known, but investigators believe it may have been electrical in nature. Damage is estimated around $30,000. Let's go ahead and get one last check with traffic with Samuel King. Thank you uh, very much, Stephanie. A uh, issue here is solved vehicle loop 410 near Jackson Keller. Let's go over here, give you a better look at what's going on in this uh, situation here. You see uh, lanes moving slowly, but then this one uh, there is blocked. So uh, watch out for that. That slowdown already has you down to 24 miles per hour in that area. Still have this crash uh, downtown here, 35 at Alamo. Travel time's looking good across the board. 17 minutes coming in from Lytle, 26 minutes on 35 coming in from New Braunfels, Mike. Nice looking start. We've uh, got a couple of clouds hanging around here right now and temperatures at 53, 40s in the Hill Country. Light jacket's not a bad idea. Now, just a nice looking day. 62 at noon, some high wispy clouds and 70 for a high temperature today. Cool tomorrow morning and overall the Easter weekend I think is going to be a very, very nice one. Temperatures will be slightly on the coolish side, but a beautiful day today for a lovely lady to celebrate a Aww, birthday. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> what nice. looks like a, a Aww, tribute to the movie uh, Purple Rain or Foot, <laughs> Footloose is all actually, my favorites. <laughs> is actually your birthday thank balloons. You. Happy oh, birthday, Stephanie. Oh, thank you. I was double checking her favorite color and Aww. she said it is purple. So I think I actually yeah, got it right this, this time. Is, oh, wow. this is beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday. I mean, happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. To me. Aw, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> have like, a great day. Let's break the COVID thing. <laughs> it's like I know. Hugs here. I know. We're ready no, to. Thank we you have guys. more surprises coming up on GMSA. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> including former teachers, boyfriends, everything. <laughs> have a great day, guys. <laughs>